You've probably heard about how a simple AI search can use up to 30 times the power of a simple Google search. One of the reasons for that is because AI requires a lot of graphics processing horsepower, so that means you need really, really, really big data centers. And of course, we're told that AI is changing the world. And I think that's fairly accurate. AI is changing the world, just not in the way that you might think. The truth is that AI is making people miserable. Hi, and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus, the silent Tribble. Uh, first, I have to thank viewer Tonio for sending me this information because I wasn't aware of much of it, so thank you. Uh, second, we need to talk a little bit about data centers. Uh, some fun facts about data centers. There are a lot of them, and as it happens, there are over 5,400 data centers in the United States of America. The number two country for most data centers is Germany with a little over 500. That means that the USA has over 10 times more data centers than any other country on Earth. Many of these data centers are headquartered in Virginia, interestingly enough. Uh, in fact, one third of the world's internet traffic goes through the state of Virginia. Virginia also happens to be the headquarters of the CIA, which I'm sure is just a coincidence. Now, despite the fact that they have 5,400 plus data centers, because of AI and its processing requirements, they need to build a lot more data centers. And what they're building are even bigger data centers. The problem is if you just hop on Google or if you do a YouTube search for data center nightmare, you will come across videos of people who are essentially suffering because of the data centers that were often built in their backyard. Many times these data centers are literally hundreds of feet away from a resident's backyard. Um, sometimes the data centers are kind of built in the middle of a neighborhood. And the reason the data centers are being built here is because the communities in these states, in the United States of America, uh, the communities give big tech all kinds of subsidies and benefits and they do everything. They bend over backwards to lure big tech to lure these data centers into their neighborhoods because it's a big money maker, right? So, okay, well, why are people miserable? Well, where to start? In many cases where they build a big data center in some rural or community area, uh, the water table changes. The company comes in, they start construction on the data center. They go, ooh, the water, the water table, underground water sources. Oh, that's we've got to drain it. Uh, many people see creeks and rivers suddenly drop or disappear completely. Um, people who have wells. There was one couple who uh, they had to basically repair all the piping in their house because they had a well. And after the data center near them was built, uh, they had too much silt in their well. So the well started pumping silt and sand and grit. Their water heater was ruined. Their washing machines were ruined. And of course, they're retirees. They can't afford to repair all this. And the companies that built the data center will do nothing. Even if you don't have a well, you can still have low water pressure and problems with water because a whole lot of water is required to cool all the processors in the data center. So essentially the first problem is water problems or water pollution. The second type of pollution that's a problem is noise pollution. These data centers are massive. In many cases, millions and millions of square feet, much larger than earlier data centers because AI requires so much more processing power. You need that many more racks of server equipment. And of course, each one of those racks of servers has to be cooled. So you have all kinds of spinning fans, you have water being pumped to massive chillers that are outside in the data center. And all of this machinery is running and it creates a whole lot of vibration. 
So much so that one homeowner complained he had to move his family into their basement in order to try and get some sleep because they heard this low-level buzzing humming noise all the time and it was driving them all mad. And then there's the light pollution. Many of these data centers, they have very high security. Um, they're lit up like Christmas trees. And if it's 400 yards from your back door, they're lit up 24 hours a day. They run 24 hours a day. The data centers are even built 24-7. When they start building one of these things, there are dust clouds, there's machinery noise. At 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, they're pouring concrete. 24-7 they run. And when they're finished, they're sitting there humming away 24-7. And when night falls, they've got floodlights everywhere. The whole place is lit up. And so residents complain... Right, I need blackout curtains, I need blackout blinds. I, it kind of ruins things for them. And finally, you have the EM pollution. If you're one of those people who are what they call electrosensitive, um, good luck surviving the construction of a data center near you because you're going to be miserable. Now, when these big data centers were still on the drawing board, public officials came, talked to residents, and said, don't worry, this is going to be great. This data center coming to our community, it's going to bring all kinds of jobs. Nope. In many cases, an entire data center can be run by 30 people. So maybe in the construction process it created jobs, but once the thing is built, no, it doesn't create jobs. The second thing they were told is, oh, don't worry, you'll have plentiful and clean water. Well, no, in many cases the exact opposite occurred. And the third thing they were told was, well, uh, your electricity prices are going to go down. Now, this one was actually true in many cases, because what happens is big tech is given subsidies and cheaper electricity and blah, blah, blah. So the county, the tiny region that actually has the data center, their electrical prices often go down. But all the surrounding counties in that state, somebody's got to pay the bill for this increased electrical usage, and of course it's not big tech. So the county where the data center is, their electric bills go down, but everyone else around them ends up paying two, three, and sometimes four times as much as before the data center arrived. Electricity isn't free, and the data center's pulling a whole lot of it, so supply and demand, there you go. So they were promised the sun and the moon, and what they ended up with was higher costs, lower property values, and a lower overall quality of life. And of course, most of these problems are due to these brand new super giant data centers they're building, and that's all because of the wonderful AI that's going to change everything. And unfortunately, in most cases, AI pretty much sucks. Oh sure, it's good for a few things. For example, you can give an audio sample of a person's voice and then give it text and it'll generate an audiobook for you. And uh, You can give AI a chunk of text and say, I want this in a male voice with a Spanish Argentinian accent and it'll do it for you. I mean, my wife's a linguist, she loves it. It's, it's super useful. But in most cases, it's just making stuff up and, you know, we're also told that it's going to uh, it's going to make our jobs easier, and all these companies are leveraging AI, and they even lay off employees. And now, just in the past couple of weeks, there have been several news stories where companies are going, yeah, that AI thing, it didn't work out. Can you guys come back and work for us again? It's not turning out to be the wonderful, glorious, uh, revolutionary change in everything. It's turning out to be kind of a disaster. In fact, this whole AI push is actually complete lunacy from pretty much whatever angle you look at it from. For example, a few days ago it came out that OpenAI as a company last quarter actually lost a whole bunch of money. Nevertheless, in recent weeks and months, they've come out and publicly said, yeah, we've got an agreement with, uh, we're going to buy all this compute power from Oracle, we're going to buy you know, tens of billions of dollars of electricity, we're going to buy a power generation, we're going to buy billions of dollars of GPUs, and, and of course all these companies are like, sure, you're open AI, you're, you're, you're worth billions, and your market value, blah, blah, blah. but there, how does a company that's actually in the red pay for a bunch of stuff 
tens of billions of dollars of equipment and processing power and energy, how does it buy that stuff when it's in the red and it doesn't have the money to actually pay for it? Again, we have this sort of magical accounting or magical economics at work where everyone is so blinded by the awesomeness of AI that they're willing to bet the farm. Not even just bet the farm. It's like they've literally lost their minds. <laughs> it's, it's literally crazy. It does not make any sense. And they're all like, yeah, yeah, this is great. Carry on. But it gets even better than that because Google came out recently and said, yeah, you know, our AI data centers, we need a whole ton of electricity to power them. So what we're going to do is we're going to reopen a closed 600 megawatt nuclear power plant in Iowa because we're going to use that entire nuclear power plant's worth of energy to power our AI servers. So, oh great, now big tech is getting into not only building but purchasing up what? Individual power plants? The whole electrical grid? Are they, are they going to end up owning the whole power grid too? And then, I mean, does anybody stop and think like, hmm, maybe the fact that we need so much electricity, hot on the heels of go green, maybe the fact that we need so much electricity should give us pause. And maybe we should think about making all this AI more efficient and cheaper the way that DeepSeek did. Nah, nah. Let's not bother. We're making money. It's good. And then, of course, you have vibe coding. This one is a lot of fun. For those of you who don't know what vibe coding is, basically, instead of writing code, you're a programmer, you write code, right? No, 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 no. Now you vibe code. What you do is you use a tool and you tell the tool, it's an AI tool, of course, you tell the AI tool, write me a piece of software that does X and it writes it for you. You don't have to check the code. All you do is you run the code, and if it does what you told the AI to make it do, you're done. Pack it up, ship it, throw it out the door. We just made money. Don't have to do any work at all. It's awesome. Never mind that AI often makes things up, and it can't write code that it hasn't actually seen before because it's all about processing probabilities and kind of like a large language model. Uh, just ignore all that. But the hilarious thing here is that uh, recently two vibe coding companies were sort of outed as having used Chinese technology at the core of their products. So you're not allowed to talk about China and you're not allowed to say like, yes, maybe the future of technology is coming from China. They're growing, they're getting smarter, they're, they're producing. A their manufacturing capacity, their, you know, you're not allowed to say any of that. And you're supposed to think that they're evil. But if you don't want to write your own code, you can use a vibe coding tool that's based on AI tech that came from China. I just, I don't know anymore. And I think that's kind of the point. You know, before I called this AI push, I called it a bubble, the AI bubble. And I said the AI bubble is going to pop. And that's probably true. But this isn't just a bubble anymore. Um, this is kind of like the disintegration of economics. It's the disintegration of logic. It's the disintegration of reason uh, based on the people suffering from data centers and you know the ones who have children who are suicidal after talking to AI, you know, we hear all these stories and it's also apparently a disintegration of society. Um, ultimately, it's not just the AI bubble, it's actually kind of a targeting of normal people. It's like, how else am I supposed to look at it other than that when I see literal insanity times 10 to the point where bankers are, are literally just making stuff up in these circular deals that are the craziest thing I've ever seen. And they go, yeah, no, it's perfectly fine. And you're supposed to use AI for everything, even though it sucks and doesn't work. And like, yeah, no, that's fine. And you're sp supposed to... You, the whole thing is utterly insane. It's like the definition of madness. So where is AI going? God only knows. But again, 
our glorious future is not coming from a bunch of Western companies pushing literal nonsense on us. The technology will evolve, the bubble will burst, many companies will go belly up, and after that, after the dust settles, maybe we'll get to see what AI can actually do. Because it is useful for certain things, but not at the cost of, you know, 500 nuclear power plants worth of energy, not at the cost of people's water and noise pollution and light pollution and EM pollution and, and no, that can't work. It just can't work. For more techie tips, see scottystech.info or you can read me on Substack. Links in the description also to donate. If you can support my channel, I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.